I think, yeah. to question two, which is um, from um, an American chappy, uh, Randy Strand, 908. Right. Uh, and he's asking, um, will I be as safe in a Kraken, a uh, fiberglass yacht, GRP, hull, as, as I would be if I had a metal hull, say, if I was going to the Arctic Circle? <laughs> Ice, in other words. Yeah, this is a question I get. You know, the, the thinking or the assumed conclusion is that aluminium as a building material is stronger than fiberglass. And here's my answer to that. If you're trying to, com to compare uh, five mil or six mil aluminium to five or six mil fiberglass, yeah, the aluminium is going to be stronger. But who the hell says it's got to be five or six mil fiberglass? A Kraken is laid up with 17 to 22 layers of composite material and is 18 mil thick. Yeah. And it is literally, because we we also use aramids, which Kevlar is what we'll, people would recognise as that in all of the collision areas, uh, areas it's, it's literally bulletproof. Right. Yeah. And so, no, you would be much stronger uh, going in uh, a Kraken, a composite build, than you would be going up into an aluminium. One of the things that people don't realise with aluminium, whilst it's, uh, you know, it doesn't crack, you could say, quite perhaps, like people expect fibreglass is going to, what it does do is bend a lot. Yeah. And when you go up and in the ice, you're going to have collisions with the ice, naturally. Um, and what you're going to find is your, your boat's going to look like it's got consumption. With, <laughs> with yeah. within a short period of time because the ribs stick out and the plates dish between it. Right. So you, that's you're right. You can say, oh well, yeah, I don't care about that because uh, I'm not going to sink. But my <laughs> the actual point is, you are going to care about it when you come to sell your boat. Yeah, quite. Um, and with a composite laid up GRP construction, such as a Kraken with longitudinal and latitudinal stringers and ribs, uh, frames, then uh, you, there's no question that is immensely strong. Sure. Now the alternative, because the guy said metal, so the alternative is steel, and now we are coming to an ultimate material for blue water cruising, I will agree with that, uh, as long as you don't mind spending half your life on maintenance, yeah. Because my God, you've got you've got a lot of maintenance, and and I mean it's never done. No. And it doesn't matter what anybody tells you, don't believe them. You your boat will always have rust streaks. Yeah. Uh, and there's you know that's an ongoing situation, yeah. which is. Yeah, undesirable. You really want to go and sail, don't you? Don't really well, want to true, go in uh, yacht, uh, shipyard to shipyard, even, grinding and no, shot blasting. And even the steel fittings on my boat, which is a wooden boat, um, um, which are, they're galvanised. The galvanised always wears out. Yeah. Always rust streaks coming through. And you can't galvanise. No, uh, it's uh, it anyway. No, but you can't galvanise a steel hull and deck. No. You know, and it, it's no, it, quite. yeah, it is a, a proper nightmare. Yeah. I mean, I love my first boat. I built a. Uh, just down the road from here um, but you know there's too much goes yeah. along with the deal but the other element of a steel boat that's got to be taken into consideration is the weight of the building materials because obviously you, if you've got steel you're coming all the way up top sides as well yeah. so you, now you've got a lot of weight above uh, the centre of gravity uh, now you put steel decks on it yeah. and if you put uh, plywood decks and I've known boats that have got steel ribs and plywood decks yeah good luck that's going to leak yeah, there's no question yeah, no, about that yeah, right. um, so you put steel decks on it and now you've wound up with uh, a very tender boat and the answer to a tender boat is to make a smaller rig. Smaller rig. And then it so doesn't go sail. More slowly. And, it, and it doesn't sail. Bigger fuel uh, costs. Yeah yeah <laughs> And, and and so it yeah. goes into that, you know, wrong way spiral, yeah. downward spiral. Um, and I would suggest once you start getting up to super yacht size to perhaps 70, 80 foot and above, perhaps 90 foot and above, then steel's 
probably a much better proposition because there's so much more weight displacement right. that you can utilize. But with a smaller boat, and of course, as you'll know, the older cruising boats had very small rigs mm. and often they yeah. were catch rigs. Yeah. You know, there's another question that I'm sure will come up. Why do we like sailing rigs so much? But, um, you know, you're out there and you want to sail. And so there's no question in my mind at all, not one milli percent of a question, that the best building material uh, is well laid up. And I have to caveat that with yeah. that. Uh, GRP. I'm also going to say yeah. the kind of the, the kind of properties of GRP being so strong and so light uh, and so you know, relatively easy to build in have kind of in a way been used against it by modern boat builders to hey hey we can reduce an awful yeah. lot of cost here and look this boat thinner and thinner. six six mil dick uh, yeah. six yeah. mil thick right yeah. that's uh, what you're going to find yeah. uh, a production boat's going to be even the better quality yachts are going to be half the thickness of a kraken yeah even the better quality yachts the ones that you're you know going to stop having to eat oysters to a fold for example <laughs>